air evacuation from the building. Um, the main evacuation route is to is the single door to the rear of the building, and you would just go out through the hallway into the parking lot. The area where we would actually meet in the parking lot was right by the street where the parking lot, the driveway right by the street. The secondary evacuation route is right behind us through these main doors down the stairs, and it, again, we would ex exit out through the parking lot, and the evacuation zone is just next to where the parking lot and the um, street is located, right by Bourbon Street right there. Um, the location, in event of a medical emergency, um, the location of the AED is located downstairs in the lobby. Um, to use the AED, all you have to do is open up the device, turn it on, and it will give you uh, instructions. Of course, someone needs to make sure in the event of a medical emergency that um, someone in the room calls 911 immediately so they can get someone up. Paramedics out as soon as possible. In the event of an earthquake, um, make sure everyone uh, amongst the tables, you know, try to get underneath the tables, of course, first. Anyone who is not by the tables, best place to be is near the walls. And of course, anyone near the windows should immediately get away from the windows and go near a wall within the building. Um, Wait until the earthquake stops. Don't do anything until the earthquake stops. And then uh, evacuate either via the main route. And, and if that area is blocked, then again, you would evacuate via the stairs, downstairs. <clears throat> do not need an elevator in the event evacuation as well. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Uh, Director Brown. Here. Director Downey. Here. Director Dupre is absent today. Director Colin Terry Johnson. Present. Director Koenig. Here. Director Lynn. Here. Director McPherson. Here. Director Newsom. Present. Director Pagler. Here. Director Kibros Carter. Yes. Uh, Director Rockin. Here. Ex officio Director Northcott. And ex officio Director Riskin. Here. And we have quorum. Great. Thank you. Now to announcements. Today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County, and it looks like Language Line Services is not able to provide Santa Cruz interpretation today. Okay. All right. We will go now to Board of Directors comments. Any comments from the board? Quiet day today. Okay. Uh, we will then move on to item six, oral and written communications to the Board of Directors. Did we receive any written communications? Okay, um, so this will be the time then for oral communications. Uh, each public comment is limited to three minutes or less. Uh, please feel free to approach the podium if you'd like to make any comments on items that are not on today's agenda. Good morning, uh, board of directors and uh, members of the public. I would like to use this time to provide an update on the current state of an important topic of today's meeting, which is uh, employee wages a union employee wages and wage studies. Uh, since the ratification of our recent contract, uh, Metro Management, our union, and the Board of Directors have increased wages for a total of 25 employees. Uh, those 25 employees, um, most of them typically are at the lower end of the pay scale, and so we're really happy to kind of start to see progress on um, kind of moving up those wages for those employees. Um, on that same topic, I'd like to make a comment on, the, uh, on how the management group today will be getting a significant increase following today's meeting. And uh, while I do support uh, wage increases in principle for all, management or not, I would like to point out that the abnormal, there is an abnormality of the timing of this increase. Uh, historically, both sides run a large-scale wage or large-scale reclassification and wage studies in parallel, and this has not happened since 2019. Uh, with that said, I would like to humbly uh, request the board to make a motion for the following agenda items to be tabled for one month for transparency behind this wage study to ensure fairness and consistency following our recent wage studies. Those agenda items are um, item 13 and consent, consent agenda 10.10 .10 for, for revisal of the budget withholding those management increases. The reasoning behind this action is that we, as a union, want to provide the best service possible to the public, which given our recent scaling, up in service requires proportional scaling on the administrative side. Uh, we are sitting on a number of vacancies of funded positions, uh, not to mention future, uh, not to mention no future plans to scale existing positions like our custodian staff as an example. Um, with that said, I look forward to continuing the dialogue as progress is made on both 
uh, union wage increase topic and uh, the topic of filling these uh, vacancies. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any further? Oh, yes. Hi, welcome. Good morning, board members. My name is Gabriela Gonzalez, and I'm the vice president of our chapter. I want to start off by saying that I'm a little hesitant to publicly speak about this in that we might be retaliating just about speaking about a matter like this. But I want to fully support my chapter president and reiterate requesting that item 13 get table for a month for us to be provided seller slip documentations to review if it completely objective and fairly inconsistent and is consistent like previous studies have been done. I also want to support the request for item 10.10 on the consent agenda to be revised to be approved the, the revised budget to be approved with the exception of the wage increases re referencing, referencing item 13. I want to show the appreciation to, to the board and consideration that this would be greatly beneficial for us to help us Metro as a whole to start rebuilding a culture where everyone is held accountable and treated equally while maintaining the necessary transparency of a public agency to assure that Metro funds are being used in ways that would assure the public is receiving the utmost best service from our team. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. It's the second time I've been to meeting here. Right. Ride the bus every day. And um, a little disappointed that you kicked the drivers to the curb and provided them bathrooms. Unsanitary, what you've gotten. Uh, no place to wash your hands. Can you imagine being dirty hands? The flu season's coming up. Some people are going to have diarrhea, whatever. Unsanitary. And that's sad. Made all kinds of promises. Didn't keep them. <laughs> that's the backbone. The whole system is your drivers, the mechanics. It's not you guys. You guys are here to serve them. They're serving you. Uh, drivers, I take diuretics to get the water out of my legs. I'm on the bus for an hour, five hours, 10 minutes. I can't take my medication if I'm coming over here. I got no place to go to the bathroom. Am I being environmental friendly like your mission statement says? If I got to pee on the wall or something? That's sad. That's sad. The first thing I ought to be doing in this meeting today is providing bathrooms for voters that might. Probably not going to vote in your tax thing to fund. How do you screw up the system and not have secure funding? That's not thinking outside the box. That's not even getting out the box to see what it looks like. Four pieces of plywood and a five gallon bucket would have been better than what you've got right now. Sad. Again, not very happy. I contacted a couple of, uh, on behalf of Metro, uh, a couple of porta potty places. There's some ones that are interested in providing services for you and cleaning them in exchange for me advertising on the side of the bus. What a win-win situation. A new building. Do you guys have bricks for sale? You know, get a brick, make a donation. Anybody thought about that? There's all kinds of things that can be done to increase funding and get them voted so that you can vote in this tax measure. Right now, it's not looking too good for anybody that's riding the bus. Uh, if I was a driver in the union, I'd do a walkout. The way you guys are treating them, no security for your drivers that have to park up a hill somewhere. Come on, people, you guys are service to the community, it's a non profit. Do what that is just right when the, the, the support of everybody. We should all leave this meeting with a smile on the face, but sadly, some are going to leave it a frown. I don't know what the solution is, but I know what's working is not. So you're going to build another one in Watsonville. Maybe you can learn from this one how to do that, which is right, and be of service to the community. Thank you, and you have a good day. Thank you. Any further public comment this morning? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll move on to labor organization communication. Good morning. My name is Olivia Martinez. I'm the Region 2 Director. Santa Cruz is my town. And Santa Cruz is not, Metro is not doing well. You have chosen the wrong leadership to lead Metro. It is a mess. The same way that you take pictures with big openings, you should take pictures of what's going on downtown. It's a complete mess. When I first met Corey, he didn't like me because I said BS. He has a moral compass, which is good. We all do. But it's interesting that you have fired a woman, a Mexican woman, that was 
surviving domestic violence. She was out a lot. You should have fired her, yes. You suspended a black man for five days for being not good customer service. That's fine. You fired a Mexican man because he forgot his license twice. But you gave an opportunity to a man that has blatant bully people who has made comments that he wants a bomb metro, that he has been racist towards this black woman, but there's no moral compass there, right? I have emailed him lots of times to hold this person accountable. Instead, you appointed him to a position where you did not give opportunity to other people that have been waiting in line for that position. Your employees are not happy. There is something wrong when you hold thieves accountable and other people not accountable. People in your organization are not happy. You have an HR that is completely dysfunctional, that does not listen to their employees. The assistant HR is an EEOC officer? How is that? How is that possible? We can do better, Santa Cruz. Mike Rocket, you were my professor at UCSC. You taught me this. We can do better and hold people accountable. Not just the livestock. My husband rides the bus. My daughter rides the bus. I have a stake here on what's happening. Where people ride the bus. People that don't have a Lexus, BMW, or trucks ride the bus. We can do better. I don't come here because I like to. I have integrity. I love my community. I stand for my community. This is not his community. He just moved here. We live here. We know our community. Please hold people accountable. Open no position. Make sure that positions are being filled behind. Hold everybody accountable. If you hold my members accountable, hold them accountable. They're not running this place as it should be. Now we are, we've hired a research department to do a thorough investigation of what's happening here at Metro because we are done with all this secrecy. We asked for information and we're denied. We have four perk charges and grievances that are coming forward. I don't like to do this, but you taught me this, Mike Rockin, about integrity and holding people accountable when I took your class many years ago. And so I'm asking you to do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional labor organization communications? Uh, seeing none, we'll move on to item eight, written communication from the Metro Advisory Committee. And it looks like we have a letter from the chair dated 9-19-24. Okay. Anything more on that? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, item nine, additional documentation to support existing agenda items. Okay. We'll go now to our consent <laughs> agenda. Um, all of the items on consent agenda are recommended actions considered to be routine and acted upon as one motion. Is there any member of the board that would like to pull an item from consent? Okay, hearing none, I want to pull 1010, the fiscal year 25 and 26 budget, just because I have some questions and, and a couple things that I want to comment on outside of just the normal consent vote. So we will put that. Yeah, let's put that um mm -hmm. 13. Yeah. Let's put it before. Let's put it between 12 and 13. Okay. Uh any further questions or comments on consent? You should ask the public. Good. I'm just making sure there's no further questions or comments from the board. Okay. Any public comment on our consent? Okay, seeing that, we'll bring it back to the board. I move to approve the remainder of the consent agenda. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. We don't have um, Vanessa online yet, so do we still need to do a roll call or can we do it by the we'll we'll do it by voice? voice? Okay, thank you. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carried unanimously. We will go now to item 11 a presentation of employee longevity award for September uh, 20, 20 years. For Candace Almanza, paratransit supervisor. Candace with us today? No. No? Okay. 
Uh, all right, well then let's just give her a round of applause. Okay, we will go to a retiree resolution of appreciation for Thomas. Thomas, I'm gonna butcher your last name. I am so sorry. Zestowski? Zestowicki. Thomas Zestowicki, Safety and Training Program Specialist. Uh, is Thomas with us? No. No? Okay, well, we'll give him a round of applause also. Okay, uh, do we have any public comment on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I believe we have a motion. Second. And a second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, carries unanimously. Yeah. Make a motion. That was uh, uh, in my second. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so before we move on to item 13, we're going to go back to item 1010 that was pulled from consent. Um, and I just have a couple questions that I was hoping to get kind of clarified. Um, in the packet, um, attachment D shows all of our funded positions. And I'm glad that we're recruiting for bus operators because we need them. Um, but I do want to make sure that we have all the other staff to support that, the mechanics and the facilities and whatnot. So I'm just wondering if we can get in a future agenda item with an update on the recruitment efforts to fill any of our open positions that are that are currently funded, if we can have that for um, next month. Okay. We can absolutely do that. All right, thank you. And then the budget, um, I believe includes the revised wage scales, but that's on item 13. So are we approving them during item 10 or item 13? So we can do them both together. Can we do them both together? Okay, so then with that, we can just continue on to item 13 and we'll approve all of it at the same time. Perfect. Okay, great. All right, we're gonna move now to item 13. Request for a revised wage scale for executive and senior management. So it's been uh, a number of years since uh, the last uh, wage study was done on management. Uh, last one was done in 2018, 2019. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so a lot has changed in that time period. Uh, we uh, have had uh, um, with changes in uh, uh, economic um, vitality here in the community. We've seen huge uh, cost increases to housing. We've seen uh, changes in responsibilities for uh, management positions as we've grown through Reimagine Metro. Um, with that, uh, in order for us to stay competitive as an organization, uh, we need to uh, revisit and reevaluate uh, management positions, uh, hopefully more frequently than we're doing now, but uh, six years has been long enough before uh, showing our appreciation uh, to management uh, for the work that they do. Their jobs are hard, uh, like all jobs here at Metro. So I think it's important that uh, that we recognize that and that we keep uh, the ability to hire uh, good people into those positions. And if we don't stay competitive, it's going to become increasingly more difficult in the already expensive uh, community. Corey, I'm, I'm sure. Like, having been at the budget meeting, there were some things that were shared that I thought were really powerful and touched my heart that um, some of the managers talked that when they were promoted, they actually owned less pay and that people that they were supervising were making more. I mean, some of that um, hearing from them and seeing that and thinking these are people that are managing, um, you know, in very responsible jobs are not being compensated in the way they should. And just to echo what you're sharing, but having been at the budget meeting and hearing from them um, brought home to me even more. Uh, and even you sharing that of all your research that you thought I'm prepared to move to Santa Cruz and and on paper it looked like these numbers are good, but when you actually reality are here, 
what you find. And I, I think that it's important that you bring this forward. We need these managers. We need them to feel. I know how much we struggle in Scott's Valley not to lose people to other jurisdictions uh, going outside Santa Cruz County. And so I, I thank you for bringing it to light. And I wish that everyone could have heard from some of the people that, that we heard from um, at the budget meeting. So thank you. Were you done with your presentation? Yeah, okay. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'll echo those sentiments. Um, I do believe we need fair wages across the board at all levels of um, staffing um, at any agency, including here at Benton. Mm -hmm. I have some questions about process, process in the past, which you may not have answers to, Corey, given that you um, joined us recently and process now and moving forward. Um, one, why have we waited so long? Um, and is that typical? Before 2018, how long had we waited to do a wage study? Because um, I know with SCIU workers, there's, there's a process in place and there's a timeline in place, um, but with management and um, directors, uh, I'm unclear about what the process is, how um, how often we can or should do them. And if there isn't one in place, and again, you may not know the answer to it, if there isn't one in place, uh, would it be appropriate for us to maybe develop an ad hoc committee or just work with HR to put a process in place. So I don't know who can respond to that question. What have we done in the past? <laughs> so the last one that we did was 2018. Before that, it had been over 20 years. Um, unfortunately, I can't answer why it was over 20 years because I had just come in when they started the process, but I know there had not been one for over 20 years. Okay, Daniel, I, think, I, think that's, I think that's a problem. Um, we should put a system in place and whatever the mechanisms are that we that we do that, let's put a system in place so that it's um, clear and transparent and available to everybody at the agency and to the public. Um, my other question is, um, how do we select our third party consultants? How do we vet them? Um, and how long have we worked with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in 2019, again, it, the, they were already halfway through the process when I, or I'm sorry, 18. When I started, they were already halfway, halfway through, but they had gone out for bid um, and got proposals from multiple places, and then they chose one. Um, there was a ton of controversy just around that, that company, the way they did it, and things like that. So we chose not to use that one moving forward. We went out for bid and got got three more bids from other vendors and chose a vendor based on their experience in the industry, pricing, things like that. And we've been using that one since we did wage studies for union in 2019. So since 2019, up until now, we've used that, that vendor. Okay, so the process was we went out for bid Correct. and they were selected Correct. in the, the, the system that we have in place for our selection of bids. Correct. Um, is it... Um, so when they do their analysis on any position at any level, whether it's SCIU or management, um, what happens with that analysis um, typically? So we use the same 10 agencies that we've used since 2018, um, which are our, our sister agencies, um, transit agencies around our same size, some that are bigger because we do use like VTA and stuff too. Um, but we have parameters that, that were established back in 2019, like what areas we're going to be looked at. It's a total comp thing. So benefits, uh, retirement, all of the, the bells and whistles are, that belong in a, uh, in a package. And all of those are looked at through each agency. And then the, the wages at that agency, the job description. So they look at the job description first, find the, the job description that most matches the description we're looking for or the job we are. And then that gets translated to essentially that spreadsheet that we have in our mm -hmm. market. Okay. Can I understand that question? Yeah. Um, does the union agree, uh, have a role in agreeing to the, which agencies we're going to use for? Yes. Them? Yes. They agreed in 2018 to the agency. And then we actually just met and conferred recently when we started back with their, because SEIU has an article in their uh, MOU twice a year. They get to pick positions and groups for studies. And so we just met and conferred um, on the results of the last one we did. And we reconfirmed 
the 10 agencies that and they agreed to those. Obviously, that's a key factor. Like Correct. That. Absolutely. What cities Absolutely. And, and the parameters that we use. No, sorry, those are my questions for now. I may ask one yeah. comment and question. Yeah. Well, I'd like to follow up. What is the timing for this latest SEIU wage study? The time uh, they get to choose positions in June and December. So was it done in June? Um, no, it was not done in June because they did not submit their positions. Okay, so another is coming up in December. In December, correct. Mm -hmm. And we met recently the other day, and they informed me that they're going to be giving me those positions next week. So actually, they're going to be giving them early, and we'll start them. You know. Okay. Sorry, I have a follow-up now to that. Um, my understanding is that with, I mean, I, th I think we are talking about two separate things, but obviously related. Um, my understanding is that with those wage studies, there is a selection of two positions to study. Is that, is that correct? Okay. We'll look at Monday. Okay. Yeah, we've got a group of positions. So a group in a group of positions. Group of positions, yes. Okay. In a family being contained between um like three positions, it may entail 18 to 20 people, depending on what they choose. For example, the last one we did was the facilities group. And so because there was movement, it moved to the entire facilities group. So it's the benchmark position, and then it moved like the facilities, the lead, the supervisor, so it moves the whole group. Okay, and then um, my understanding from talking to some members of SDIU is that 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 deadline was missed. There was a request for extension, an extension was given, um, but internally they were working through a system that that is is I think still being figured out. Um, I guess I'm, I'm getting to my question. Mm -hmm. um, since it happens twice a year, and there's a group of positions. Is is has that window is is that window now closed for that set of positions that they could have requested for in June? Oh yes. So generally, so they asked for an extension. What I said was, give me your positions, and then if we needed to extend for the comp piece, we'll talk about that. And then they never submitted their positions. It's so, but is that still available? Not for June. June is, I mean, it's okay. already October, so they're going to submit for December. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Question. Now, is this this process seems pretty complex and time? Is this this a standard something that's is this a standard process in Metro and other agencies where you have twice a year that you submit? Uh, I don't know. Are there contracts by the, the back? You know, offhand right now. Um, I know I've talked to other agencies and they do not have anything like this in their MOU. I've talked to other uh, CEOs. They don't have this in their MOUs. So it, it is um, a little different. Um, they may have another process that they follow, you know, every so often for studies, but not in their actual MOU. So they only really have it in our MOU. Compare to the rent that's similar to us. That that I'm sorry? No, no agency that we can compare to or look at it. Similar. Well, the process is pretty much the same. Yeah. If, if they do it, the process is pretty much the same. But as far as that language oh, being in an MOU, right. it's not very common. Then it's done twice a year. That right. This is unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, outside of negotiations, yes, it is. So you, what most, most places you do a compensation study as part of the bargaining process for the contract sign and so you have agreement, you know, exactly what's going to happen. It's not set out that we're going to do this twice later in the year or whatever. Correct. And that's how they handle it. So, they, I mean, it's not they don't do them. They just... It's Correct. Kind of, it's done at the negotiation of the contract. It's bargain an open-ended kind of an arrangement that this will happen twice during the year. That's all. Um, I don't have a question. I, I'm going to make a comment. Um, it's obvious that the both from SEIU Feel that, that somehow the, this process has not worked well for them. Whether you know they didn't submit the stuff when they were supposed to, whether I mean they may be unhappy with the agency, but they had a chance to bargain that, and so that's a little late for that that decision. Um, I, I'm you know always trying to figure out how we can make people happy and make stuff work. And a lot of the claims and the uh, we received a, 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 a I got a phone call. I don't know who else did. Because of the Brad Act, I don't know what I'm speaking for myself. I have no idea what people want to do around this question. But my 
most of the claims that are being made here are not on the face of them actually appropriate for unions to be, they're not in charge of it. I mean, unions don't get to decide what the pay scale is for management. That's done by the board and with advice from the, from the management team. Um, the issue of whether, I don't believe that we are not transparent in the way this stuff is put forward. I don't believe we're facing a fiscal cliff that's so dangerous that we can't afford to pay people on market rate for the work that they do. Uh, and then, as people know, when it comes to like bargaining with the unions, I also don't believe because we're having tough times is an argument for why you shouldn't pay people a decent pay increase. You know, even if everything else has to go to hell, you got to you can't you can't balance your budget on the back of workers and make them work for nothing to get away with it. So, I feel strongly about that for the unions, but I feel that way about the management team as well. Um, I was. Thinking that, like, you know, maybe if we had a month, we'd been meeting asked for, like, do they have a month? I think, you know, they had several requests, but one possibility was, can we put this off for a month so we uh, could think to understand more about it and so forth? I don't think we're going to learn anything in a month about our budget and whether we can or can't afford pay our management according to the studies that we've done. Um, I just don't think that's going to make any difference. I don't think we can hoodwink or fooled into it. I don't think we're facing fiscal cliff that's so dangerous that we need to not pay, pay people at this point because you know the place is going to hell in a handbasket. I just don't think that's the case. On the other hand, I do think the unions are clearly unhappy about the way their process has worked out. I don't, I'm not in a position to understand the details of like, you know, why did they not turn the thing on in on time? Did we play some role in that? Was that you know on them? Why didn't the extension provide enough time? What other stuff we've done? Um, I would like to ask our, our um, CEO, uh, Corey, who, who, not whether he would be willing to sit down with the unions to talk about management salaries. It's inappropriate. It's not, they don't get to bargain over that. And I'm speaking as a union activist and leader for all my life. Um, but, but they do have a right to talk about their concerns about the way their um, wage studies are being done and so forth. And even though know, they, bar they bargained it, and have, both sides have to live with what got bargained. But I want to ask Corey whether you'd be willing to sit down and formally with the unions, not wait a month or something, but at some reasonable time in the near future, and talk about their concerns about their um, comp study process and what's going on with it, and what it is we could do to make that better and make it work for them. Is that something you'd be willing to do, or is, I mean, you don't have to because we're not you're not required to bargain with them over that at this point. But would you be willing to sit down informally and have that discussion with them about their concerns about that? Absolutely, I'm, I'm willing to to talk at, at any point <clears throat> have discussions. So see if we can come to agreement and understanding of, of where we're at. So sometimes it works in the you know in the favor of the union, sometimes it works in the favor of the uh, uh, metro. Um, so but absolutely I want there to be open communication. Can I add to Corey's um, comment? I, I just so that you are aware we actually did sit down and redo that that language. It was something we started in negotiations, but we weren't able to finish it uh, in time. So uh, myself and a member of the union worked um, for a couple months on language that we came to work for both sides. And then that was presented to the union by that union rep and the union agreed. So then we all got back together and just had another formal meeting that we went over the language, they took it out to membership, it, it was agreed upon. So that language has changed a bit to where it works better. And that's what they wanted and what, what worked for us and, and all of that. And then Corey was actually in on that last meet and confer after the, the, the one study of positions was done and there was not agreement, but then we came to the table, we agreed on it. So we, just so you know, I mean, I know that we're always willing to sit down, Corey's always willing to sit down, but I think it's important for you to know that just a few months ago, we did sit down and we all agreed on it and, and did a side letter. Well, I, I'll just say it's apparent to me that despite everybody's best, I mean, sure. best mm -hmm. and efforts, people are unhappy and they're not feeling like there's something not right about from their point of view about what's going on with this. So there needs to be some more discussion about it, I think, and that needs to be taken, even not, again, I'm not underestimating the importance of those things you've already done or tried to do. And the union did, did give credit to Corey and others for the uh, recent uh, uh, bringing up the minimum wage for people, um, which I think, you know, I think our management's been responsive to the union stuff. I, I do want to say to the unions that I, 
um, I did say in particular the things that are behind us, that um, it's really critical when these things go sideways or badly, or you know, not not this thing we're facing right now, but the this process with the um, compensation studies and so forth. And there was some point I believe that uh, either a, a curb charge was filed or threatened to be filed or whatever. That's the moment when you should be calling me and other board members, not just me personally, but board members in general. Uh, you know, it's not inappropriate to go around management on that level and say, we're unhappy. You know, we have this concern about this thing that's going on and we're not getting, if you're not getting a response, you know, you're sort of asking for a meeting and if they don't feel that the meeting they're getting is adequate or whatever's happening. That that that's a time when I can I can try and other board members can try and actually do something about it, not and I'll use this term advisory, hold hostage to management salaries as a way to get the attention of management. You've certainly gotten my attention, and I think management's attention by this, but I don't think in the end we're going to get much out of the month of sitting around studying this. I understand the budget implications. I think the board did when they passed this, but certainly the committee that recommended it to the board understood the I, I read that budget carefully. I I've served on a lot of boards, and this one seems to take the financial stuff seriously. You know, so I, I think that's an important thing. So, although I, as I told the union, I'd be willing to certainly consider their concerns at the meeting today, I just don't feel moved that the appropriate thing for us to do is put stuff off for a month to study it further. I do think they should ask for a meeting with Corey and Corey hope to pull meeting with them and talk about the actual concerns about their outlook uh, the, the, the compensation study issues that are out there. Those, I don't know. Again, I don't know enough to know what those problems are and whether there's still other things that can be fixed within the parameters of what's been bargained. Um, so that's my thought about this. I, since I haven't talked to other board members, I don't want to like make a motion at this point. I want to see what other people want to do or whatever. But that's those are my feelings about the situation right now. Uh, I think Rebecca had a question, and then we'll come to you. This is more about process. Um, at the very beginning, you said that we see the significant changes in scope of and management responsibility. I know that whenever we have um, HR committee meetings, you know, a lot of them have to do with a job that has now done that. And there's a compensation request and, and all that. And a little bit here. Um, I'm trying to figure out how that hasn't happened with all the management positions over this. Um, it's, no, there may it just may have been circumstances. I don't know when you're talking about processes of reviewing entire, you know, and a periodic review. Do you have to do that if you're, you know, looking at each job position? Because I'd like to know how these jobs expanded in scope and, and responsibility. Do the job descriptions reflect that? I mean, it's, how has that process does it happen? Because to me maybe this all could have been avoided if we just did it on a case by case, you know, as the job changes, you know, this person is now doing this, they have to know this system. And so mm -hmm. you evaluate that job. I just kind of want to understand when we do that versus an across the board thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, uh, we can definitely do that moving forward <clears throat> on it. Uh, typically with management we're focused on all the other positions uh, and that's where you know our time focuses at and that's why i think part of why these wage studies have been so far in between uh, because that hasn't been the focus right so maybe you have two things you have the periodic review that happens every so often and i'm sure your hr consultants can tell you what the other agencies are doing um, regarding that and maybe an additional layer of you know hey this job is, you know, outside of this this regular review. Um, yeah, I mean, that's I'm gonna just piggyback on what you were saying, um, Rebecca. That um, I think part of the challenge here is the lack of clarity around process. And so, when it's time for a motion, I'd like to give additional direction that we articulate a clear process, whatever that process may be. The appropriate group can determine that articulate a clear process for these wage studies at all levels um, of staffing within our agency um, to the board, to uh, SCIU, to SMART, to the public, just have that really, you know, decided on, presented, articulated. So I'd like to add that direction. And um, I, I just, I want to make a comment. Um, 
know if I should, but I'm going to because I'm feeling called to. Um, I, I take issue with some of the comments made earlier. Um, I've served on a lot of boards and a lot of commissions, and this this board is is unique and special in a lot of ways because the commitment that I see visibly from staff at all levels is just tremendous. Um, and so staff at all levels really deserve the dignity of, of the work that they're putting out for the community. I've said this before, the Metro is more than getting people from point A to point B. It's really about community well-being. I feel strongly about that. I knew nothing about transportation when I joined this board, and I've learned a whole lot in the last three and a half years. Um, I take issue with the comment around that our CEO is not from this community, and so therefore maybe insinuating that we should not trust our CEO. Uh, we've all had different journeys of how we got here. Mine was from Iran to Germany to Turkey to Sacramento to Santa Cruz. Um, not all of us were born at Dominican Hospital. So, um, <laughs> right, you can't claim you're a local unless you're born at Dominican Hospital. My kids can claim that. Sisters Hospital. Sisters Hospital. So I just, I, I just want us to, I want to invite everybody to just take a moment and, and really kind of just reflect on what that means to be a part of this team, to be a part of Santa Cruz, to be a Santa Cruzan, whether you moved here three months ago, 20 years ago, where you were born at Sisters Hospital, Dominican Hospital. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, any further questions from other board members? Yes. I'll just offer, I'm for my own sake, Mrs. I'm saying this to Dawn, but I can't see her. Oh. I, the concept of knowing how we compare with other agencies is really valuable to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the studies look like. I, it's been a while since I've been on the HR committee, mm -hmm. but I would love to find a way that almost as a benchmark, there was some way that those findings on wages and positions might be provided to the board so we could compare with these other agencies mm -hmm. and have some sense of, are we near the top? Are we in the middle? Just, just something comparative. It, it's somewhat less relevant to this particular issue, but it helps me understand where we fall in regard or in relation to those other agencies. Provide a little transparency. Transparency, but just a deeper understanding of are, are we really rocking it or are we at risk of losing more people to MST or mm -hmm. wherever else? Yeah. That, that, that would help me have a better feeling about this. More information. In, in my experience as, as a council member, like 26 years at the city, because we did these comp studies as part of the bargaining process, the board members actually got into the in closed session as it was appropriate, into full discussions about like, well, what are the job descriptions and the benchmarks and how does it compare and what, and you know, which groups should be on this? Yeah, the unions also there had to agree to what the the, uh, the benchmark comparison cities were going to be. In this case, transit districts are going to be. Um, but you, you got that's where that took place because this is agreed that there's going to be this process of hiring consultants who will do the study, and then we get presented with it. And then we, of course, you have the ability as a board member to dig into that, go find that stuff. It's not presented to us in the same way it would if you're in the negotiations. And so maybe what we should do in the future is make sure that, you know, how, how we're going to do it, we're going to continue in the same way to bargain an agreement in, you know, that something will happen later in the year, uh, not, but not during the actual bargaining of the contract, but after the contract's signed, and there's still some open-ended issues about how that stuff all going to work, there needs to be a little bit more board engagement at that point. So, because I've had the experience at this board and at the city, of, you know, seeing those actual comparisons and like the, and asking hard questions, you know, is this really a comparable job? Is it different? I mean, every job's not exactly the same. So I, the board, I think, does need to have confidence that that's okay. I think it's been a good process here, but I, again, I'm not close to it enough in the last three years to know sure about it. But I think we need to have, board members have to have confidence that they understand that that can kind of work comp study the case study is being done in a way that makes common sense that the jobs are fairly described and people are being, being paid for the work that they do, not that they used to do or that somebody thought they did in some other city that's almost like what they do or something. So, again, I have enough confidence in that to support the motion, the, uh, the recommendation on this measure 
But I think board members need that level of understanding. And we don't get it because it didn't happen in bargaining. It happened. It's arranged to happen after bargaining was completed. By, by agreement of both parties, it wasn't stuck. Somebody got stuck in this. So. I'll just be brief and not uh, reiterate what's been said. I agree with what's been said, but I just look at this. And the last time this was done on management five years ago, and it's about time. We hear this in the county all the time. You train them, you, you get them ready for two or three years, and they're out of here. We have a real, uh, you hear about the complaints of the housing costs and so forth. It goes on and on. Uh, that's not, we didn't cause that. We didn't cause the city or the county or wherever. It's just a fact. So we have to get real, whether it's management or not, so how we get the best people we can. And I think we have some excellent uh, GMs and COs that, uh, unfortunately, they turned over. We love you, Corey. We're glad you're here. I'm not saying uh, that, but uh, we, we've lost some people that we shouldn't have. That we're really qualified. So I think it's about time we do this. Let's, let's get it done. Uh, back to the processes. I know we discussed a couple of words on about uh, creating a management and things like that. And I don't know if Metro really had the luxury since 2016 and recovering and COVID to do that. But I think that that would speak to some of the things they're saying about retaining people. They come here a couple of years and then off they go. I think a lot of our employees told me, you know, Metro's my home. I've been here this long. And if we can keep that happening by saying, okay, this, and, and I realize there already is sort of the job path, but is there the mentorship? And is there, you know, a formal or some sort of way for people to say, yeah, I'm, I want to do that. How do I do that? Yeah. There, there, um, some mentor right better than others. But I will say that a lot of our management team are previous union members. So Daniel promoted up, um, Brandon promoted up, uh, promoted up Isaac, um, uh, Michael, um, Monique, Christina, Freddie. Freddie. So all of all of that those managers here were previous uh, staff members and the union. So we definitely definitely want to promote within. That is our goal. Our goal. When I first came, Monique was um, a union member, and she was lucky enough to be mentored by the position, uh, the person that was in my position before they left. And so she was on that path. And then when I came, we continued that path, and I was able to promote her into my assistant role. So, um, and she's wonderful. So, I mean, that is definitely our goal. All right. I have a couple questions. Um, so the first one is that uh, it was mentioned that the last bid for the vendor was in 2019. How often do we go to bid? Because in other agencies, it's every five years. Every agency is on a part of, or other agencies on a part of, we do it about every five years. Do we have a cadence for how often we go to bid for new vendors for this? Or do we just decide that it's time? Or is there a process there? Typically, the way that my correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, typically, it's it's four years, and then we uh, generally will have some uh, one-year extensions, or uh, if, if the work that they're doing is good, we can continue that. But there comes a point where we'll, we'll need to go back out uh, for a bit. Do we have plans to do... I, I'm only asking because this is five years. Yeah. So did we do a one-year extension last year? Okay. Yeah. I, yeah I, I'm sorry. I don't have the answer. Okay. Um yeah, if we could get some updates. I think generally um, what I'm hearing is that the board is kind of lacking in information and how this process works. And that kind of keeps us in the dark. And then we're hearing things, you know, from one person or another person or one side or the other side. And it's hard for us to kind of break through all of this information and figure out what's fact and where all these pieces are put together. I kind of explain it as like when you build a puzzle and you start with the edges, but the middle's not, it's not coming together in the middle. Um, so I'm wondering, will the, the union chosen positions in that wage study, will that come back to the board just so that we can uh, better understand how this all works, um, like in a closed session or, or something along those lines? 
Well, you will approve it if there's a, a move in um, salary. So the first step in that process is updating the job description. So once they submit their positions, we send them what's called a PDQ, and we send that to the worker. And the worker, along with coworkers or their union or their supervisor, will fill out this PDQ, and we make changes to the job description. And then we sit down with the union to make sure that there's agreement on the changes that were made. So we don't move forward at all until we're, you know, until we're agreeing on all the language that was either put in or taken out. Once that's agreed upon, then that goes out for the comp piece of the of the study. Um, and then when that comes back, we we sit and we agree. And then once that's done, it comes to you. And I we usually take it to personnel. Um, or if for some reason we can't take it to personnel, we may do consent or whatever, but at that time, all of that information would be there and it, we can answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if it'd be appropriate to have like a workshop or something where we can better understand all of this. Um, I, I think it would be <clears throat> helpful. And then um, in terms of the kind of negotiations during bargaining and, and what's happening outside of bargaining, in a lot of the other agencies that I work for, there's a management member, a union member, and then we have a third party, either a negotiator or mediator or someone from our counsel's office that acts, you know, as a negotiator or a mediator. Is that something that we have considered either Julie or someone from our general counsel's office or some kind of other third party um, to kind of facilitate these processes? I know I, we do that in the city. We do it in other agencies I'm a part of. Do we have any third party or is it just a management number and a union member and that's it? It's a management and a union. Um, we have used a mediator before back in 2019 negotiations when we came to a, a kind of a, a standstill. We did have mediation um, before we ended up agreeing and closing the contract. Okay. So I, we, we do do it during conflict negotiations, but no, not, not for process and many things. Okay, I, I'd like some additional information about that, if that's something that the board could, you know, learn about and look into. Um, how many positions does this increase impact? Looks like it was about 30. Is that right? I don't think there's so many. And there's a lot on there that are not, um, not active positions. So it moved it on the scale, but they're not active positions. Okay. And are those part of the positions that we're going to be recruiting for or are no. those staying open okay yeah there was 30 on the sheet um in the packet but it, if some of them are inactive inactive unfunded yeah yeah it's quite a few that are inactive exact number there's eight inactive on that that's yeah. what i'm saying so there's 23 impacted or 22. Okay. We can do math. Okay, 22. Okay, thank you. Um, and when does it go into effect? If it's approved today, when does it go into effect? The next two. Okay. Um, I think. Oh, the so the budget committee when I when I looked at that has a fiscal impact and then the packet has a fiscal impact and they're they're two they're different numbers. Yeah. Is it is it because numbers were short up between now and then or did we find out some more information? Check to you. Yeah, so it's it's really headers. Um the budget packet that was presented it to the board shows FY24 budget in relation to FY25 budget in relation to FY26 budget. The uh, uh, cover sheet was the impact from the adopted FY25 budget to the revised FY25 budget. So it's a little bit apples and oranges when it shows the comparison. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that was all of my questions. All right. Uh, we'll take it to public comment. If there's anyone that would like to make comment on this item, now's the time. Hi. Let me make three clarifications. Um, the first one is in the significant, uh, which is the uh, request that we asked it for a, a an extension on our salary study. Um, we realized that we were starting to fall behind, and that's why I wanted to like formally request the extension in email. And to be honest with you, I did not know that this was canceled until today, right now. 
um, when I had gotten the response from Dawn, she basically said, okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and give you the extension, but there was no deadline or say it has to be done by X amount of time or anything like that. So I find it kind of in bad faith to learn about that today. Um, and to kind of give more backstory on why we were kind of falling behind and, and we're able to, to give the positions right off the bat is because we established a new process, which was done for the first time this cycle. And basically it, it consists of letting the membership vote electronically. And the first time we did this, we didn't have that electronic vote and we were just doing votes in person. And we felt that that was not a full, a, the most democratic way to gauge our memberships um, voting block because you have to physically be there and some some member schedules don't allow them to be. So we, we felt that it was not as fair as it could be. So that's why we established a new process where everybody gets a vote as a member. And so that's why it kind of took a little bit longer. And basically, uh, we will have those positions elected and voted on pretty much in our hands on Monday. I just have to formally send that email. So it's a little disappointing to hear that this extension is just somehow not here today, but we can talk about that later. Uh, the second uh, point I wanted to make is that Santa Cruz County, for an example, actually has automatic wage study done, I want to say every five years. So this is not something that is like new to uh, union organizing, uh, existing contracts, and especially contracts here within Santa Cruz. And so um, from what I was told by Olivia, because she represents that um, bargaining unit, is that this is something that's just routinely done. No one even thinks about it. And it's just a very seamless process so that there's not there's no contention in having to negotiate these things every single time. So just a smoother process, which I observe that happens over there. But I do recognize that Santa Cruz County is much, much bigger than this district. And they may have more funds to kind of play with to do these periodic wage studies as our budgets are kind of flexible and dynamic with different fiscal cliffs that I've already heard of. I think this would be the second or third time I've heard that. Mm -hmm. um, the third point I wanted to make was uh, to Mike, to you. Um, you. You said that I could always call you uh, for when we run into these tough situations. And I just wanted to like let you know that we try to solve this internally as much as possible. Sure. Um, the last thing I want to do is tarnish like Metro's reputation in front of the public. And so that's kind of the reasoning why things kind of went a little too far this time before we started to reach out to the board. But yeah, that's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to make a quick point that, though we're not opposed to anybody getting a, a wage increase, that's not why we reached out or asked any of you board members to support us in this motion to push us back a month. We we fully agree that everybody should get a raise. It to me, it's really questionable how. This specific group of management, everybody's wage increase, everybody is coming back with the wage increase suggestion. That's not the case for other positions for frontline workers. How does this differentiate from everybody else? This is why it's really vital for us to request those documents to see how that wage study actually happened and the numbers that are actually coming back from the consultant because they actually provide a spreadsheet seeing how those numbers come out. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hello. Uh, I'm one of the mechanics here. I'm going to drop. Um, like to say, thank you for your time. Uh, one thing I would say, we are struggling. Uh, we did hire quite a bit of <clears throat> drivers, which is a good thing. We need the drivers. However, we are struggling on the mechanic side. We need training. We need more mechanics. We need to be able to train our mechanics. I believe the manager we have right now is doing a good job uh, in changing things around. We are getting our buses back on the road. We're trying to do our best to not just get them on the road, but get them to a level which is something we're comfortable with ourselves. Like when you get in your car, do you want to get in a dirty car? You know, you want to get in something that you're like, wow, I'm proud of this. This is going to get me where I need to go. It's going to get me to a job. It's going to get me to the grocery store. It's going to get me to school. So in saying that, we do need the help. We're struggling with electrical buses. 
we need to train there. We're going to get hydrogen. Not too many people are familiar with hydrogen, if anyone. That, you think? <laughs> that's going to be a whole <laughs> another monster we have to deal with. So if we could get ourselves settled in with having CNG, having the electrical, all that taken care of, you know, hydrogen, that's just going to be a smaller step, you know, it will big step, but at least it won't be panic mode. So, you know, what I'm asking for is, could you help us get the training? Um, I know, obviously, people see the positions open here. Money is always going to be an issue because you have mechanics making $60, $70 for what we do somewhere else. And they're like, why do I want to go there? So, and I'm not here to discuss all of that. I'm just making a point. <laughs> um, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning, board. It's always dangerous for me to take this, the podium because of my password. <laughs> <laughs> I preach every, every weekend. Um, I was recently here for my 25th award. So I'm born in 26 years here at the Metro, and I'm not here to back mouth Metro because it has provided um, job security for me for all these years. In fact, I want to say thank you. Uh, five years away from retirement, and uh, it's been great. Um, I know all of the managers here that interact with them because I'm in facilities, and so there's maintenance lead. And my crew was going to be here uh, because they were one of the, uh, what well, well, the latter did it was, um, there was a study for uh, uh, an increment recently. And, you know, we uh, we got a little something, um, but anyway, going back to have a lot. By going back to the comp study that it was done in twenty eighteen, Don, twenty years, five years. Yeah. yeah so okay. So the reason why um, probably don't remember how it was done, why there was no comp study done in managers before, it's because historically, uh, up to when Alex Clifford came on board. Whatever the union got, whatever the employees got, a way of a new contract, that's what managers receive. But then that's how it used to be done before. And that's why you haven't seen one cup study for managers. So I remember that clear. And um, you know, the reason of going back to 2018, when this was done across the board for our employees and our, our union. Managers went first. The issue that we have with that back then is that managers use different agencies than we, that, that it was used for us. Anyway, right. We had an issue with that because when it came time for us to do it, I mean, that affected us in a negative way. And um, as far as managers getting an increment, well, let me go back a little bit to that. As a result of their study, Back in 2018, some of you got up to 29 percent, 27 percent. You didn't even get close to like uh, 15 percent at that time. I don't remember what it was, but it was probably in the 12 percent, if that. So I interview people here, the soil department, facilities department. One of the issues that we get sometimes is the pay. Like recently, we interviewed a person who was a great candidate, and uh, he turned down the job the next day when we offer it. We try to offer it to that person because the pay was too low. And so we also struggle when it comes to uh, hiring people for all the departments, not just for management, right? Like I say, I'm not here to say, oh, managers don't serve to get an increase. I'm not here to say that because the man right there, Benny Roach, he's a great manager and he's my manager and he's a great person, does a good job. He has taken two departments right now and he has probably close to 50 people under his uh, uh, leadership. And um, I think he, he deserves, you know, more money because of what he does. But I guess it comes down to like where uh, employees sometimes feel that they're not as important. And you have stated here that 
Metro employees and management, you know, are the same. So in, in, in that sense. So yeah, I feel like a family member here, you know, get along with everybody. But sometimes when- I'll give you 30 more seconds because your time is completed. So if you could wrap up your comments. Okay, so my Thank comment you. here is that uh, I'm not opposed to management, you know, getting a little something. But when you talk about some position got 50%, because there were some that were close to 50% last time. And what we uh, were told last time that we uh, negotiated our contract by Michael Street, that we couldn't get any bigger increment than what we got because of the fiscal cliff. And now you're talking about doing another big increment for management. What we are talking about fiscal cliff, you know, still. So, how is that not important? now than it was then we were negotiating so that's my question thank, thank you. you any additional public comment okay seeing none we'll bring it back to the board Shepard. I, do, I have a motion that i think captures the discussion but i do have a question I um questions. okay <clears throat> um question i think it's to don um the, the the wage study for SEIU and seems like maybe I don't know lost in the communication or lack of clarity around when that extension was for. Um, what I'm hearing is that the positions will be ready on Monday. Is it feasible to accept that set of positions for the for the June extension that was given? Awesome. I would hate for I would hate for SEIU to have missed around while they were reconfiguring how they do their voting system. Um, so respectfully, when the increase was asked, I'm sorry, the extension was asked for um, before the expiration date, what I said was, please submit your positions and then we can extend later if we needed to. Nobody replied. That was actually brought up in our labor management last month because Olivia asked about it and I reminded her that when Noah at the time had sent in for the request, what I had said and that I had never heard back and it expired. She asked if I could forward her that email. I forwarded her the email, which she had been on. Jordan was on, the whole team was on. Um, and she acknowledged it. She says, okay, thank you for sending it. So she was very aware. They were all aware last month's labor management meeting in August that their June had expired. When we had our labor management a few days ago, now here in September, Olivia said that she was going to submit the positions for December. So she, they they were very aware that the positions had expired. The timeline had expired. Okay, so maybe there was some miscommunication internally there. Yeah, it, it seems like I'm, I'm hearing two different things. Yeah, but I have an email, so I have it in writing that that it was sent and acknowledged. But what would be the drawback of accepting these positions? Um, that will be the ready on Monday as part of the June submission. That we're going to be then doing back to back because we got to do them again in two months. And and what are the challenges there? Just help me understand. I am, just don't know. The time it takes to do it, the budget impact because June would have went in at, at one time. Yeah. And then December would go in at one time. Now they'll go in at the same time. So they'll hit at the same time. And it is contract language. I'm just following the contract. And if it were the other way around and it were a detriment to you know what I mean or or an hour a give um it wouldn't be the same way you know what I'm saying it's I'm just following the contract I'm not doing anything outside of the contract thanks for clarifying no problem is there like a set a, a limit to the number of positions that could be considered every six months yes yeah 10 or no it's it's um I'm trying to remember because we just renegotiated the the numbers I believe it's one or two positions or one or two groups, when, but like I said, when it's a group, it's the, the benchmark position that's studied. And then when there's an increase, it's the entire group that, that right. gets moved. Can I clarify that? It, it's actually one ladder and three standalone positions. Okay, wow. thank you. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that was the so new agreement. One language. ladder and three standalone positions. Yes. So six positions each. And then two ladders. Got it. I mean, I will say, it's October, basically. June's kind of a long time ago. Um, I'm sorry the internal process slowed things down, but I think, you know, the, the contract language is generous, as uh, Director Rock can point out. I mean, 
the county doesn't have any like automatic equity adjustment process. We that's part of bargaining. And we are making quite a few adjustments in this cycle. It was we have a agreed upon contract as of last night. That's great. Um I think about that resolutions. Right. Congrats. Yeah. Um but uh, there's no automatic process there. And so I think the fact that we haven't worked into uh, the contract here at Metro is is great, great process. Um, and uh, it's really we're going to keep working on it continuously moving. Great. And do I understand correctly that management actually doesn't have that? that I mean, so to me, that answers the question of why management maybe got a larger increase last time it was considered in 2018 because it hadn't been done in 20 years. Um, so if you don't put it off, then you have to make a bigger change. Um, I mean, it seems to me that we probably should have some kind of flexible or regular. I mean, it's been, it's been brought up to have some kind of a schedule. It's going to be for one group of employees, maybe it should be for the other. Um, I think it's, that's it. Um, I'm prepared to move that. Well, you have a number of things like that. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, I, I, I have some questions and comments, but I can do it after your motion. Okay, I, I think this captures the discussion. Um, so my motion has four parts to it. Um, the first is to approve the request for revised wage scales for executive and senior management. The second part is to direct the CEO to meet with SCIU member, um, leadership members to discuss the wage study process. The third component is um, direct CEO to work with appro appropriate persons to develop and articulate a wage study process for management um, and perhaps report back to the personnel committee um, or the board. I don't know where. Report back to either the personnel committee or the board. And then the fourth is going back to 10.10, .10, um, adopt the revised fiscal year 25-26 budget. I'll second. I have one suggested uh, um, friendly amendment, which would be to publish the wage study management in our written materials so the next uh, board agenda. Right, Perfect. yes, Perfect. accepted. Okay. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second. That motion covered actually a lot of my comments and questions. Um, I, I will just reiterate, I do think it's important that we have processes and procedures and timelines and schedules. Um, there was a question about the agency that determined the manager's wage scale being different from the agency that determined the frontline worker's wage scale. Is that Previously, that previous, the, yeah. Now they use the same set. Same set. Um, yeah, I mean, if we could put together some kind of process that that lays out that kind of information, the same agency will be used, and this is how often things are going to happen, and this is who's going to be involved, and all that stuff. I think that's um, that's really important. Um, and then again, just just again reiterating um, at the next board meeting, if we could have an update on the recruitment and um, efforts to fill, you know, mechanics and other, you know, the need for training and all that stuff, just so that we can stay um, apprised. And then in regard, in regard to um, Director Koenig's request to publish the wage uh, scale, is that what it said? The wage the study. The wage, wage study, yeah. Um, yeah, I think if that could come back also to the um, personnel committee, just so that we can kind of dive into it and make sure that we understand. I don't know. I can't speak for anyone else, but I felt pretty lost um, with quite a lot of it, which is why I feel like this conversation game is so in-depth because we were all trying to figure things out. Um, yeah, I think that's that's that. Okay, any other comments or questions? What's that? Yeah, all right. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, unanimously. Okay, we're going to move on to the CEO oral report item 14. Okay. Um, so, uh, Metro has earned recognition for five consecutive years of compliance with the City of Santa Cruz Clean Ocean Program and was awarded the plaque at the City Awards celebration. Uh, so, great work. Uh, congratulations to the Facilities Department for that. Uh, the APTA leadership, uh, APTA is our national transit organization. Uh, APTA leadership has a, they have a, uh, a group that's selected every year out of uh, 
number of applicants. Uh, and this year, uh, John Rigo was selected to be a part of that leadership program. Uh, so uh, his name will be announced uh, this weekend. Uh, at the conference, so we're excited for him. Uh, today, uh, Metro is participating in the UCSC Downtown Day, uh, setting up and tabling uh, at the Customer Experience Center on Front Street. And this presentation uh, will be included for a scavenger hunt to help uh, new students get acquainted with the area. October 2nd will be California Clean Air Day. Uh, Metro is offering free passes, uh, free fares countrywide, countrywide uh, that day, and encouraging the community to make their own uh, Clean Air Day pledges uh, through our online portal. Uh, we'll also have a tabling event at the Customer Service, Customer Experience Center on that day. October 6th will be Blue Innovation Day, hosted at the Seymour Center. Uh, Metro will be showcasing uh, one of the uh, ORAT buses and setting up a booth to promote environmental benefits of public transit and encourage attendees to sign up for a Go Santa Cruz to participate in one run at a time. What year is that again? That is October 6th. On October 16th, uh, Jody Frediani, uh, one of Metro's one ride at a time photographers, will be hosting her Wild Monterey book launch at the Exploration Center. Uh, Metro will be tabling at that event and showcase uh, the Orca well bus. Um, the Exploration Center is right at the head of the wharf, Santa Cruz. And on October 19th uh, will be our bus review. Uh, so a few of the board members have signed up to help judge and announce uh, at the event. If anyone else wants to participate, please uh, reach out to Donna uh, for that. It should be a really fun event, and I look forward to seeing uh, hopefully a majority of the board there uh, at it. November 1st, uh, this is a uh, save the date. Paracruise is celebrating its 20th anniversary. So this event uh, will be it's being held at uh, 2880 Research Park Drive in Soquel on Friday, November 1st, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and more details will follow. Effective as of September 3rd, uh, there have been 10 new hires and one promotion. We have uh, one mechanic, uh, two custodial service workers, two paratransit operators, five bus operators, um, So the state legislative update, uh, August was a busy month for the legislature, sending Governor Newsom about a thousand bills. And the governor has until September 30th to sign veto or allow these bills to become law uh, without his signature by taking no action. Uh, governor Newsom also released uh, 1.9 billion of the 2.4 billion total of 22 regional entities statewide on July 8th, and an additional $343 million of the $2.4 billion to an additional 18 regional entities statewide. The second released uh, amount includes uh, RTC's first year share of the SB 125 funding, totaling $16.4 million. Uh, our state uh, legislative advocate, Michael Pimentel, will join uh, the board meeting in October to give an update. Uh, as well, uh, our federal um, legislative advocate will also be there. Uh, join us at the October board meeting for an update. Um, yesterday, uh, a number of staff went down to uh, Monterey for the, I think it's, they said, 37th annual Central Coast Transit Summit. Uh, this year, we had four transit systems that attended. Uh, Monterey Salinas, uh, San Luis Obispo, uh, San Benito, and Santa uh, Cruz uh, went down and it was a, broke out into groups uh, and were able to share information, uh, challenges, issues, and uh, collaborate and kind of build those relationships so that when we do have issues uh, throughout the year that we know who we can reach out to. So it's a really good event. I really enjoyed it. And 
that is seen in my report. All right. Questions? I'll just add the uh, blue innovation is including a talk about green hydrogen mm -hmm. uh, in the afternoon session. It's down in Lost Land. It's going to be talking about that. Where is that? Uh, it's at the Seymour Center. Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Any others? Okay. Um, public comment. Okay. Seeing none, we'll come back to the board. I'll just say anyone who is available to go to the bus rodeo, it is a super good time. I went last year, may or may not have driven a bus. It was kind of terrifying on my end, but I was encouraged to do it, and now I feel very brave. Um, I'm not able to take it. Nobody died. Nobody died. <laughs> I'm not changing a career anytime soon. Um, it was a fun day. It was a really fun yeah. day. Yeah, we've got a lot of really talented operators. Some of us got to drive, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to make it this year, so I'm sorry to to miss it, but um, I can't wait to see the pictures and hear the updates. It's a really fun event. I'm glad we do it. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Uh, with that, we are at the end of our meeting. Our next meeting will be Friday, October 25th. Same time, same place. Uh, until then, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Our meeting is adjourned.